Hello! In this video we are going to just look at an introduction to the very basics of what's known as regression. So we're going to look at first what is a regression equation. Well when we are given paired data we can oftentimes find a line of best fit which is known as a regression line and this is what we would consider our regression equation. Now if we look at this, the equation for it we have y hat is equal to b sub 0 plus b sub 1 times x. Now that might look a little bit strange at first, but if you think back to what you've learned in previous math classes, it's actually a form of y equals mx plus b. So this is just a, a form of a very basic linear equation. b1 represents our slope because that's attached to the x variable, and then b sub 0 represents our y-intercept, and then y hat stands for a predicted y value as opposed to our regular equation we just have a regular y value. So there's not a whole lot of difference between our y equals mx plus b and our generic form for a regression equation. They have the same setup, just slightly different notation used. Now before we can get into doing and computing a regression equation for a data set, we have a few requirements we're going to look at. The first thing is that we want to make sure that our data set is from a random sample. And we also want to make sure that we have linear correlation. So in the correlation video, I looked at several different ways that we can determine whether or not linear correlation exists. So if you need to review that video, you might want to go do so now. We also need to check for outliers and determine what to do with those. Again, I talked about outliers in the linear correlation video, so if you want to go review that, you are welcome to do so. Now there are other um, requirements that go along with a full regression equation analysis. We aren't going to look at those. They're a little bit more advanced than what we are going to do, but some of those things are like you need to make sure that your x and your y um, variables come from normal populations and you would need to inspect the residual plots and just some other things but for what we need to do we're only going to look at these three requirements of random sample is there linear correlation and do we have outliers that we need to be concerned about so now to compute the regression line again remember b1 represents our slope so the first thing we want to do is we want to compute the slope and if we look at our first formula here, it says we can find the slope by taking r, which is our correlation value, times the quantity s sub y divided by s sub x. Now s sub y stands for the sample standard deviation of our y values, and s sub x stands for the sample standard deviation of our x values. There's another equation we can use. We can um, we can use this formula here where n represents our number of pairs and again we have some of those similar quantities that we had when we were computing correlation where we had the sum of our xy's, the sum of x's, etc, etc. So either of these equations will actually produce the same value for the slope. Now once we get the slope computed we would then have to compute our y-intercept. And we would do that by taking y bar, which stands for the mean of my y values, minus b1, so that's going to be the value I compute up here for my slope, times the mean of my x. Or, again, we have this alternative equation where we can plug in some of our values for the x's and the y's and the summations of those different things. So we're going to do a really quick computation by hand using the formula that has the summations in it. So I'm first going to compute or use my table to keep myself organized and I'm going to take my x times my y's again. So we did this in the correlation video also. So 2 times 200 is 400 and I'm going to multiply each pair of values. And then I'm going to need my x squared values also. So I'm going to take each of my x's here and I'm going to square those. Now I'm going to need my sums again. So when I add these all together, I'm going to have my sums in this bottom column, bottom row. And that way when I get to my formula, 
I can just plug them in as I need as needed. Okay, so now the first part of my equation for B1, it says I need to take n times the summation of xy minus the summation of x times the summation of y. That's going to be my numerator. And then my denominator, I have n times the summation of x squared minus the summation of x, that quantity squared. So I'm going to go ahead and take the values from my table and I'm going to plug them in. So now n stands for my number of pairs, so I have four pairs. My summation of my x times y's, well that's this 1205 here. My summation of x was 6, and my summation of y was 735 divided by, again n is 4 because I have 4 data pairs, and then my summation of my x squared column is 14, and then my summation of my x, that quantity squared, so it would look like this. Now, in order to compute that, I'm going to do my numerator first. So I would take 4 times 1,205 minus 6 times 735, Okay, and I get 410. And then for my denominator, I'm going to take 4 times 14 minus 6 squared. And I am going to get a value of 20. Now to do my final step, I'm going to take my 410 divided by the 20. And I get my B1 value to be equal to 20.5. So this is the value of my slope. Now, once I get the value of my slope, I can now calculate the value of my y-intercept. And it told me in order to do that, I can take the mean of my y-values minus the value of my slope times the mean of my x-values. Now, I don't have the mean of my y-values or the mean of my x-values written in my table over there, so I would have to do those calculations first. So to do the mean of my y-values, I need to add up all my y-values and then divide by the number of y-values that I added, which in this case would be 4. When I do that, I get 183.75. And then I'm going to take my slope I computed right down here. And I'm going to times that by the mean of my x-values. So I need to find the mean of my x-values, so I need to add them all up and then divide by 4, because that's how many values I had, which is going to be 1.5. So now, when I actually finish out that problem, I'm going to take that 183.75 minus the 20.5 times 1.5, and that is going to give me an intercept of 153. So now I need to put the pieces of my equation together. So I have my intercept, and I have my slope. So when I do my actual formula, remember it says that y hat is equal to b sub 0 plus b sub 1 times x. So I'm just going to plug in my values for my intercept and my slope. So I still have y hat, because this is a prediction line, a regression line. And I'm going to put in my 153 and then my 20.5 times x. So that would be my regression um, line equation calculated by hand. Now, not that fun to do the calculation by hand, so we're going to go into StatCrunch and see how we can use StatCrunch to make those computations much quicker. Alright, so I've opened up StatCrunch here and I have my data values entered, my number of children and the amount spent on groceries. And we are going to look at how can we make StatCrunch compute that regression equation for us so we don't have to do it by hand. In order to do that, we need to go to the Stat menu. We're going to come down here to Regression, and we are only working with simple linear regression. It's going to bring this menu up. I need to select my X variables. 
which for mine I had my x variables in the column titled variable 1, and then my y variables I'm going to have in variable 2. Now when I do compute, okay, it's going to give me two different pages here. Now from my output here, right here is my regression equation. Now it doesn't look quite like the one that we wrote because it doesn't really know what to call the y hat and the x, so it just calls them whatever you have the headings of that column. So variable 2, that was where we had our, our y data set in, so that's our, our y hat. And then variable 1 represented our x values, so that's really our x. But notice it still had the slope of 20.5 that we computed by hand, and it still had the intercept of 153 that we also computed by hand. So with just a couple of clicks, we can have um, StatCrunch, or another technology program, do this computation for us very quickly. Now the next page of our output, so see right here how it says page one of two. The first page is going to give you um, our information. The second page, what it does is it plots the regression line on our scatter plot. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to see is the regression line a good fit or not. So we would want to look at it and see if there's there's any values that are way far off of the regression line and those types of things. But as we can see, it looks like our regression line approximates the data really quite well because it all the data values are pretty close to it and it seems to fit through the middle of them nicely.